good evening and welcome to everybody on this joyful night. Um, everything but the hymns should be printed in your bulletin and so we'll continue. The wardens and others will come forward. This free. We have come together today to welcome Michael Mickey, who has been chosen to serve as director of St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School. We believe that he is well qualified and that he has been prayerfully and lawfully selected. Thank you. Michael Mickey. Presbyter of the Church of God. You have been called to work together with your bishop and fellow presbyters as a pastor, priest, and teacher, and to take your share in the councils of the church. Now, in accordance with the canons, you have been selected to serve God in St. Thomas Church, San Antonio. This letter is a sign that you are fully empowered and authorized to exercise this ministry, accepting its privileges and responsibilities as a <coughs> priest of this diocese in communion with your bishop. Having committed yourself to this work, do not forget the trust of those who have chosen you. Care alike for young and old, strong and weak, rich and poor. By your words and in your life, proclaim the gospel love and serve Christ's people, nourish them and strengthen them to glorify God in this life and in the life to come. May the Lord who has given you the will to do these things give you the grace and power to perform them. Given under my hand in the seal of the Diocese of West Texas in the city of San Antonio on the 28th day of August 2019 and in the 14th year of my consecration. Mike, do you, in the presence of this congregation, commit yourself to this new trust and responsibility? I do. Now to the congregation. Will you who witness this new beginning support and uphold Mike in this ministry? We will. Let us then offer our prayers to God for all his people, for this congregation, and for Mike, their rector. God
The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Ever living God, strengthen and sustain Mike, that with patience and understanding he may love and care for your people, and grant that together they may follow Jesus Christ, offering to you their gifts and talents. Through him who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the book of Joshua. Only be strong and very courageous, being careful to act in accordance with all the law that my servant Moses commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left, so that you may be successful wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. You shall meditate on it day and night, so that you may be careful to act in accordance with all that is written in it. For then you shall make your way prosperous, and then you shall be successful. I hereby command you, be strong and courageous. Do not be frightened or dismayed, for the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. The word of the Lord. from Paul's letter to the Ephesians. But each of us was given grace according to the measure of Christ's gift. The gifts he gave were that some would be apostles, some prophets, some evangelists, some pastors and teachers, to equip the saints for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ, until all of us come to the unity of the faith and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to maturity, to the measure of the full stature of Christ. We must no longer be children, tossed to and fro and blown about by every wind of doctrine, by people's trickery, by their craftiness and deceitful scheming. But speaking the truth in love, we must grow up in every way into him who is the head, into Christ from whom the whole body, joined and knit together by every ligament with which it is equipped, as each part is working properly, promotes the body's growth in building itself up in love. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to St. John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. As the Father has loved me, so I loved you. Abide in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will abide in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. This is my commandment that you love one another as I have loved you. No one has greater love than this, to lay down one's life for one's friends. You are my friends if you do what I command you. I do not call you servants any longer, because the servant does not know what the master is doing. But I have called you friends because I have made known to you everything that I have heard from my Father. You did not choose me, but I chose you and I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that the Father will give you whatever you ask him in my name. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be always acceptable in your sight. O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Will you be seated, please? Well, I want to extend a grateful heart to Mike Mickey for inviting me to be here with you on this night and to celebrate him and to celebrate St. Thomas Church on this night when we finally get together to institutionalize Mike Mickey. <laughs> there have only been a few times in my life when I really felt God was speaking directly to me, when I really felt like I truly heard the voice of God talking to me. And one of those times happened just a few weeks ago, and it happened not too far from where we are sitting right now at St. Thomas Church. I was driving on the interstate. I had been in town to visit a parishioner at the hospital. I was heading back to Bernie, and as I traveled on the interstate, there was suddenly there was this extremely bright light a blinding light. And I was squinted and I struggled and I could tell there was something, someone there in that light. And I thought, it's Jesus. And then I, no, it's not, it's not Jesus. And then I thought, it's Pastor Hagee. No, <laughs> no, it's, it's not Pastor Hagee. It, it was Mike Mickey. <laughs> His face was there and his head was huge. <laughs> and he was saying to me, remember, remember, God loves you. And I thought, he's right, God loves me. And I, and I knew right away that I had seen a sign, <laughs> a digital sign, a digital billboard inviting me to come and worship at St. Thomas Episcopal Church. The Lord just works in such mysterious ways. <laughs> Tonight we gather here and there is a sense of joy in the room and there is a sense of expectation and new hope. Uh, as the scriptures say, there was a sense of exultation in the tents of the righteous. After a period of true prayer and discernment, and the mysterious and powerful work of the Holy Spirit, and much effort by a dedicated search committee. 
Tonight we gather publicly and liturgically to mark that God is at work in this place. God has called. God has brought together the Reverend Mike Mickey and the good people of St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School. God has brought them together in a unique covenant relationship between parish and rector, rector and parish. And God has brought them together to do nothing less than begin a new chapter of kingdom work right here on the north side of San Antonio. It is good news. It is very, very good news. So now what? What do we do tomorrow after we celebrate this night? Our gospel reading from the Gospel of John gives us a hint of now what? Jesus is in Jerusalem. He is about to stretch out his arms on the hard wood of the cross once and for all. But before that new thing, he gathered his followers, his disciples, and the faithful women who were with him for a last supper. And at that last supper, he said to them, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. On the eve of this new chapter in Jesus' ministry, Jesus commanded his followers to love one another. He gave them a guideline for their life together in this new community called church that was about to be birthed. I suggest to you that as St. Thomas and Mike Mickey begin a new chapter in ministry together in this place tonight, that Jesus is saying the same thing to us. This is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. What's the now what? What are we supposed to do tomorrow? Love one another. When I was a child living not too far from here over in the Colonies North subdivision, there was a little pet store in the Colonies North Mall. It had fish and gerbils and hamsters and things like that. And I remember when you went to that pet store, just as you came inside the door, there was a rack, display rack, and it had all these little books. And every one of the books had the same title, on the care and feeding of hamsters, on the care and feeding of tropical fish, on the care and feeding of gerbils, on the care and feeding of rabbits. It seems to me that when a church calls a new rector, the congregation should all be given one of those little books called On the Care and Feeding of Rectors. <laughs> and just as importantly, rectors should be given a little book called On the Care and Feeding of Congregations. Mike, you have been called to serve Christ in the midst of St. Thomas Church and School. St. Thomas Church, I cannot tell you how blessed you are to have Michael as your rector. And Michael, I cannot tell you how blessed you are to have St. Thomas as your parish family. They need you and you need them. But what does St. Thomas need from you? Several years ago, I purchased a little book entitled Feeding the Flock, Restaurants and Churches You Would Stand in Line For. It's by Russell Chandler. And in that little book, he asked, what is it about certain restaurants that people will stand in line for hours to eat there? Why do certain restaurants have long waits just to get a reservation? Why do people drive long distances to stand in line for a long time just to eat at certain restaurants? And he asked the same thing about churches. Why are there some churches that people flock to why do some people drive across town, passing 10 other churches, to attend worship in a particular church? Why do people eagerly tell their friends about this wonderful church of which they are a part? Chandler's answers to those questions is a really simple one. The common denominator of these churches that people will go and stand in line to be part of is that they are feeding people. 
They are feeding people. Now, I'm not talking about potluck dinners or Starbucks coffee or the wonderful reception spread we will have after this service tonight. I'm talking about food for the soul. If you feed people the bread of life, they will beat down your doors to receive it and to be there. Mike, in your teaching, in your preaching, in your leadership, in this community, in your celebration of the sacraments of the new covenant, feed St. Thomas with the bread of life and nothing less and nothing more. Show them that you love them and feed them the bread of life. And what about St. Thomas Church? How should you feed and care for your rector? I think for many people in the pew, maybe the book should not be called On the Care and Feeding of Rectors. Maybe it should be called something like Magical Beasts and Where to Find Them. <laughs> Clergy are mysterious creatures. Bishop Reed tells us that we are easily distracted by shiny new things. You should see the looks we get when a couple of us get together for lunch in a restaurant wearing clergy collars. You'd think people would think we were getting ready to overthrow the government or something. But while mysterious looking on the outside, there are some basic things you can do to feed and care for Mike, your rector. And the first one is rather obvious, and it's about expectations. You may have noticed, I noticed it, a few weeks ago, but you may have noticed it. One unique thing about Mike is that he's not Chuck Whaler. Now, to confess, most of the clergy in the diocese want to be like Chuck. <laughs> it's true. Chuck faithfully served this parish for 147 years. <laughs> I think he had 35 sabbaticals. <laughs> we aspire to have as good a golf game. We aspire to have as good a sense of humor. And we aspire to be as beloved as Chuck is by this congregation, and rightly so. But alas, there is only one Chuck Whaler. Every rector is an interim. Unless you're a church planner like Beth, every rector is an interim. Somebody came before us and somebody will come after us. We build the future on the foundation of faith laid by those who came before us. Mike will build on Chuck's work and Chuck's ministry, but he will probably do things differently. He will change some things. He may stop doing some things that are run their course and aren't as effective as maybe they once were. Hopefully, he will join with you in launching some things that you have never even thought about before. Mike is not Chuck, but Mike is human. In this ministry, he will want friends to invite him and Lori and their family to join them for lunch after church, just like you want friends. He will want the benefit of the doubt, just like you need the benefit of the doubt. He will want Lori and his children to be loved and included, just like you want for your family. He will want grace and forgiveness when he makes mistakes, and he will make mistakes. But he'll want grace and forgiveness just like you. And he will want you to love one another as Jesus loves you. And knowing Mike, he will remind you every week to remember God loves you. And you will need to remind Mike pretty much every week that God loves him too. But perhaps the best thing you can do for your rector is to be the church. Be the church. Your ancestors in the Diocese of West Texas chose well when they located St. Thomas Church at this location. St. Thomas Church is located at this incredible crossroads in what today is the fastest growing major city in the United States. Jesus said to his disciples, a new commandment I give you that you love one another. And then he went on to say, you did not choose me, but I chose you 
And I appointed you to go and bear fruit, fruit that will last. I don't know how many cars drive by on 1604 or 281 every day. I imagine it's over 100,000. But imagine the people who are in those cars. Some of them are busy and harried and multitasking. I know it because half of them are on their phone. Some are running the daily rat race to get to work and get their kids to school and make a living and go home and care for their aging parents. Some are single moms and dads courageously raising children in a challenging time. Some who drive by here are high school students with brand new driver's licenses. Some are widowed and elderly. Many are carrying heavy burdens or guilt or past mistakes. Some are filled with questions about God. They are coming and going, and many of them fall into bed at night and wonder if there certainly should not be more to life than just this. They may be financially successful or academic stars in their schools, but many are spiritually starving. They need what you have. They need you to be the church to them. You have been planted at this major crossroads, so go. Go out there and bear fruit. Jesus is already out there transforming and healing, renewing and redeeming. The Holy Spirit is already running loose in the streets out there. So go out there and join Jesus and the Holy Spirit in kingdom work. Go out to the highways and byways, into the neighborhoods and apartment complexes. Go out into the schools and coffee shops and show them how much God loves them. Be the church. Invite them to St. Thomas to taste the bread of life that only Jesus can and does offer. Michael, you are blessed. St. Thomas, you are blessed. Together, you have a double portion of God's blessing. Go and be the church together. Go and bear fruit for the kingdom of God together. Go and feed people the bread of life, and in all you do, love one another. Amen. Take this water and help me baptize in obedience to our Lord. Amen. Father, Mike, receive this stole and be among us as a pastor and a priest. Be among us as a man of prayer. Amen. Amen. 
Father Mike, receive this. Sorry. Father Mike, receive this frisbee and be among us as supporter and friend to the youth. Among us as a teacher and leader at St. Thomas Episcopal School. Amen. Father Mike, use this oil and be among us as a healer and reconciler. Receive these keys and let the doors of this place be open to all people. Let all of these be signs of the ministry which is mine and yours and ours together in this place. Amen. The Lord my God, I'm not worthy to have you come under my roof. Yet you have called your servant to stand in your house and to serve at your altar. To you and to your service I dedicate myself, body, soul, and spirit. Fill my memory with the record of your mighty works. Enlighten my understanding with the light of your Holy Spirit. And may all the desires of my heart and will center in what you would have me do. Make me an instrument of your salvation for the people entrusted to my care. And grant that I may faithfully administer your holy sacraments. And by my life and teaching set forth your true and living word. Be always with me in carrying out the duties of my ministry. In prayer, quicken my devotion. In praises, heighten my love and gratitude. In preaching, give me readiness of thought and expression. And grant that by the clearness and brightness of your holy word, all the world may be drawn into your blessed kingdom. All this I ask for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Lori, do you and Mariana want to come up at this time? I want your mom to come up too. Sure. Come on up, Mom. Bishop says for you to come up. <laughs> I would invite you to stand and greet your new rector and his family. Friends, may the peace of the Lord be always with you. Welcome to uh, St. Thomas Episcopal Church and School this evening. It means so much to me uh, 
that you are here. Um, guess what? There's some cards in front of you in your pews. Did you know this? Yeah, even on, uh, even on, the, on a night like tonight. Uh, uh, there's an orange card. Uh, if you're here and uh, we don't know your contact information, but you'd like to share it with us. Wow, this is a nice church. Uh, let's stick around. This is a card for you. Uh, the green card is a, I can help. If you're inspired by, can we just talk about how great that sermon was for a second? <laughs> if you're ready to care for and feed your rector, the green card is for you. <laughs> I can help. It's a way to RSVP or to volunteer for anything. And then this is really the card I want to show you, uh, uh, this blue card. If you're here with us uh, from another church or... Um, Wherever you come from, if you would like uh, prayer, this card's for you. Just fill this out and uh, know that we will pray for you this week. Uh, really grateful for everyone who worked so hard to uh, make this night happen. Our fantastic Altar Guild and their team over here. Brilliant. Our faithful, dutiful Daughters of the King and company who have put out the greatest table you've ever seen in the parish hall after this. Come right after, yes. Um, don't, uh, please stick around for a minute and say hi and let me chat to you properly. Uh, and then our musicians, wow, wow. Oh. Love, love, love you all. Um, the music in this place is amazing. Um, anything you have for us, Your Grace? Well, I want to, before you all, in front of you all, thank Mike for uh, listening and hearing God's call through you to come and, and be among you. And uh, I give thanks to God for your presence in the Diocese of West Texas and here at St. Thomas. I also want to thank the clergy that have been here, uh, that have been here <laughs> once and come back. The clergy that are here this evening uh, to, to celebrate and support Mike. And, and they're not all vested. Some of them are incognito. Um, <laughs> But uh, anyway, I'm grateful to them, and, and uh, you, you have joined uh, the finest fellowship of clergy in the church, I believe, so, so welcome from them as well. Um, finally, uh, please keep in mind that the offering this evening goes to your new rector's discretionary fund uh, so that he might um, make the presence of Jesus known beyond this place in your name and in the name of Christ. And so I would encourage you to be generous in helping him help others and supporting them. So, um, and now walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us in offering and sacrifice to God.
continue with the Eucharistic prayer, there were uh, among the many thank yous that I could have made, there were two overlooked. One is to thank our uh, canon Ed Dahoney, uh, happily retired again, who uh, shepherded the search process here at St. Thomas, and also the Reverend Dick Elwood, who served so faithfully as your interim rector. And thanks be to God for that. We continue with Eucharistic Prayer A. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give Him thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, through the great shepherd of your flock, Jesus Christ our Lord who after his resurrection sent forth his apostles to preach the gospel and to teach all nations and promised to be with them always, even to the end of the ages. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. Father, in your infinite love you made us for yourself, and when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has is died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. All honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia! Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia! The gifts of God for the people of God, take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I'd like to invite you to this time of Holy Communion. If you'd like to receive communion, just simply hold your hands out like this. If instead you'd like to receive a blessing, simply cross your arms like this. Uh, we also have gluten-free wafers up here. Uh, should you need one of those, signal that by placing your hands like this. Our ushers will direct you to the altar rail. Would you like to have a seat? to join in the post-communion prayer of thanksgiving on the back page, last page of your booklet. Let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for feeding us with the holy food of the body and blood of your Son, and for uniting us through him in the fellowship of your Holy Spirit. 
We thank you for raising up among us faithful servants for the ministry of your word and sacraments. We pray that Mike may be to us an effective example in word and action, in love and patience, and in holiness of life. Grant that we with him may serve you now and always rejoice in your glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Just before I offer the blessing, you may wonder what this mysterious green present was. Uh, the search committee blessed them as gotten together and has purchased for the church a beautiful new set of purple vestments for us for Lent and Advent, which is a wonderful gift that they've given. Yes. Uh, old and attackable, uh, like kind of the green one that we got. So I'm very grateful for that. Um, Friends, may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of His Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be amongst you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.